Motive 11, to dress modestly. To show your love to the Lord, of course, it's just so common sense. By obeying his word, we show our love to the Lord. And since he tells us to dress modestly, by doing it, we love him. 1 John chapter 5, verses from 3 to 4. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Reason or motive 12, to please the Lord. And of course, it should be the motive in everything we do. Everything, absolutely everything, to please the Lord in everything. And of course, in the way we dress. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, um, verse 1. And we will also look at another scripture. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ that you should abound more and more just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Romans 8, 8. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And I chose this Romans 8, 8 verse for this point because I wanted to, for all of us to understand that if you walk in the flesh, you will never be able to dress modestly because it is a spiritual thing. It springs from a gentle and quiet spirit, just like we said. So to walk, to dress modestly, you would constantly have to check your heart, to check your spirit if you walk in the spirit and beg for the Holy Spirit to come and strengthen you to obey his word. Without his power, you will not be able to do it. You will not be able to dress modestly because you will always, always stumble, always fall into the trap of your flesh and listen to your flesh or the world dictating you what you should wear. Motive 13, to be a crown on your husband's head and to please him. Proverbs 12, 4 and 1 Corinthians 7, 34. Proverbs 12, 4, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who causes, causes shame is like rottenness in his bones. The woman who dresses immodestly causes shame to her husband. She is a rottenness in his bones, and ab is, she is absolutely disgra disgraceful and uh, unpleasing in the sight of the Lord. If you do not want to cause shame to your husband, dress modestly. Corinthians 7.34 There is a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I don't know even one husband who would not desire his wife to please him in this area of dressing modestly. Because like I said before, when a wife dresses modestly, she becomes a crown on his head, sparkling, beautiful crown that everybody can admire and praise the Lord for. So if you have those motives that we just talked about, those 13 motives in your heart to dress modestly, you do dress modestly. So this will be your little checklist that you can store in your heart, those scriptures to renew your mind so you can make sure that you do dress modestly. So now we come to the third point of our study, being an example of modesty, which is a, an extremely important, important point. Since older women should teach younger women how to be pure. And as you remember in the beginning of our study, we d did a little word study on the word pure and what it truly meant in Greek language originally. And we actually even looked at the root word for the, ro uh, for the word pure and where it came from. So that word pure, I would remind you, means modest and consecrated. So since older women should teach younger women how to be modest and consecrated, they need to teach them what is appropriate to wear and what is not. And most important, importantly, to be example of modesty themselves. If they 
will not teach this important life principle, the word of God will be blasphemed. The godly te testimony of a Christian woman in the sight of the world that desires to see us Christian uh, women fall will be destroyed. Uh, they need to be, uh, this, the Christian women need to be above reproach. Are there absolutes in what is appropriate or not for Christian women to wear in public? Of course there are. Of course there are absolutes, no doubt. And we will talk about right now some basic principles, how you can build your closet and what clothes should never enter your closet. And if any of these items that we're going to talk about are in your clothes, are, are in your closet, they should be thrown away. They are not modest and grieve the Lord when you put them on. You should throw them away without any regret. So take this list that I'm going to talk about right now or print it out. Go through your closet today and see if you have any outfits with these characteristics and get rid of them right away without any regret because they're absolutely displeasing to the Lord. Items with low revealing cleavage. They're absolutely inappropriate for Christian women because nobody except your husband has a right to look at your breast. Second, no tight tops revealing the bust. For the same reason, they're absolutely inappropriate because they shape your bust and completely reveal it. And once again, nobody has a right to look at your bust, bust except your husband. Um, no tight dresses or skirts revealing the body, the body curves. No skirts with high slits. This, this type of outfits reveal your body. And once again, your body belongs to the Lord and to your husband only. Nobody else has a right to look at your body in a revealing way, of course, because when you wear something tight, all your body is completely revealed. No tops or blouses or dresses revealing your undergarments or parts of it, like bra straps, panty lines. We, we, like I mentioned it before, we've been so desensitized. It's just everywhere right now. Bra straps, panty lines. Why do you think undergarments are called undergarments? Because they should stay under. It's very simple, undergarments. So your undergarments should always stay under. And I would also recommend wearing a slip because sometimes, as some of my sisters pointed, pointed to me, sometimes you can see your undergarments showing through um, your skirt, no matter if it, it might be a very modest, long skirt, but if the fabric is a little bit thin, you can see your undergarments. So keep each other accountable to that one, ladies. Uh, clothes or garments with sheer, with, with sheer fabric. Uh, they are absolutely inappropriate because, once again, you can see your body through it. No tight pants or jeans that shape legs, your buttocks, your thighs, or your front, your pubic bone. Absolutely inappropriate because it appears like you're wearing something, but in fact you're not wearing anything because you completely see the shape of, your, of all your private body parts, so to say that nobody has a right to see except your husband and the Lord, of course. Um, seven, no exuberantly costly and screaming outfits. No Joyce Mayer type of outfits. <laughs> Eight, no short above the knee skirts or shorts. Um, I necessarily do not think that uh, above the knee skirts are inappropriate, but at the same time, it's better to be on the safe side because when you sit down, your skirt naturally rises even higher. That's why I would probably recommend that uh, skirts that are above the knee would, would, should not be in your closet. <clears throat> No bra or panty type swimming out outfits, which means bikini type of, type of outfits for swimming. Absolutely inappropriate because uh, what it is is just you wearing your uh, underwear in public and no tight one-piece um, swimming suits either. <clears throat> 